So we can make lots of, you know, qualitative observations about black body radiation, but the radiation laws are the way that we put this into mathematical language to make it useful for us. So the first of the radiation laws is called Wien's law. And this just puts into mathematical language what we were just talking about, uh, the link between the peak of the black body curve, the wavelength of that peak, and its connection to a star's temperature. So how do we get a star's color our, our temperature, sorry, based on its color, we follow Wien's law, which mathematically says that the maximum uh, wavelength of a black body curve is inversely proportional to the temperature of the star, meaning that if the temperature of the star becomes larger, then the fraction one divided by T gets smaller and thus the wavelengths are shorter. So high temperature corresponds to short wavelengths. So this is you know, mathematically saying the thing that we just observed by doing the simulation. Uh, the other thing that we can uh, express Wien's law through is a, directly, uh, a direct equation. So instead of just noticing that the maximum wavelength is proportional to the inverse of the temperature, we can actually observe that it's equal to uh, a specific constant divided by the temperature. And in this way, we can use that constant to calculate the temperature if we know the wavelength or vice versa. So um, just to test your understanding of the conceptual version of this, uh, which of these is true? Hotter stars have spectra that peak at longer or shorter wavelengths, and therefore they look more red or blue. All right, I see the most votes for D, that hotter stars have spectra that peak at shorter wavelengths, and therefore they appear more blue. That's exactly right. So uh, the longer the wavelength is, the cooler the star, and the shorter the wavelength, the hotter the star. And it's maybe confusing that blue corresponds to hot stars and red corresponds to cold stars, uh, because in art, typically we use the other meaning of color, uh, but the you know, colloquial meaning of color as defined in art is for our purposes arbitrary. And this is how nature sets out the color and temperature of stars. Okay, so looking at the more quantitative version of this equation, we can use this uh, and say, you know, if we know that a star is 6,000 degrees Kelvin, then we can plug this into our equation and see what uh, maximum wavelength we would expect from its black body curve. So here is a pole uh, applying this equation. All right, so um, the things that we're starting with here are that the, um, the wavelength is given by three times 10 to the six nanometers times degrees Kelvin divided by the temperature in degrees Kelvin. And we have the temperature of our star is 6,000 Kelvin. And so our wavelength is going to be three times 10 to the six nanometer Kelvin divided by 6,000 Kelvin. And if we go ahead and uh, do the scientific notation here, I can actually re-express this as three times 10 to the six nanometer Kelvin divided by six times 10 to the three Kelvin. If we have this uh, in scientific notation, three times 10 to the six divided by six times 10 to the three, then we have our three divided by six. And then we have our exponents, which in this case, the numerator is positive six and the denominator, the exponent is three. So I have six minus three the units of Kelvin here cancel. And so the units I wind up with is nanometers. And so then if I finish off this calculation, three divided by six is 0.5 and six minus three is three. So I get five times 10 to the three nanometers. And that 10 to the three tells me that I need to move my decimal point to the right three places. So that would simply be 500 nanometers. So you might notice that if we, we, if we think about our answer to the um, last question, um, a 500 nanometer wavelength peaks somewhere between the blue and the green. And uh, we don't actually see any green or purple stars though when we look at the sky. We only really see red stars, blue stars, and white stars. So why is that? Um, the reason is that when we're looking at a black body curve, um, the peak can be at a specific wavelength, but there's actually light at all of those different wavelengths just in differing amounts. So for example, when we look at the 5,500 degree um, black body curve, 
the uh, most intense color is somewhere in the green, but there's also a lot of light in the red and almost an equivalent amount of light in the blue. And so when we put all those different colors together, we perceive that as white. Um, our sun is about 5,800 Kelvin and to us, the sun appears white from space. And when we're you know, on earth, then the blue light gets scattered in the atmosphere more efficiently than the red light. And so some of the blue light gets removed and we see the sun is more yellow. And uh, the colors of stars generally appear between red, orange, white, and blue. And our sun is most properly described as a, a, a yellow um, or a white star. Uh, but some stars you know, appear very red like Betelgeuse and some stars like Vega appear very blue. So the shade that we perceive is different than the peak wavelength, which I think can be a little bit confusing. <laughs> 